So come inside the MIP TV Exhibition Centre in Cannes to meet Chris of Babelgum. He'll explain what it's all about. Babelgum is a new type of uh, streaming platform. Um, it delivers near TV quality video um, over the public internet in full screen quality. So who's your competitor? Is it Joost? Uh, Joost is the only one on the market at the moment. Um, Perhaps there'll be others as we go along, but uh, but for now we're the only two uh, in that environment. Although you know there are broadcasters who are doing similar sort of download technologies and things like that, and we don't really think of it you know so much as a competitor. It, it's 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 making the space bigger. You know, it's getting people to watch video outside of the broadcast TV environment, and you know that's good for all of us. What uh, Babelgum is based on is peer-to-peer -peer streaming, and it turns the whole uh, conventional streaming model on its head. So. With conventional streaming, the more people who watch something or you know, want to watch something from the same place, the harder it gets to distribute it because you need bigger servers, you need bigger bandwidth, and it's like trying to put you know, thousands of cars down the same motorway. Um, with peer-to-peer -peer streaming, everybody who watches the video becomes part of the network, so their storage and parts of their upload capacity become part of the network, and so the more people you have on the network, it actually gets easier to distribute the video. So. Instead of trying to put all those cars down one road, what you're doing is, is putting 100 cars down 100 different roads and they all arrive at the same point at the same time. We're not trying to compete with television. You know, there is still a role for television in you know, that Champions League game that's on tonight, the, um, the, you know, the new episode of 24 or you know, the big movies and that sort of thing. That you know, There's that communal experience of you, know, you come in the next day and talk about it. That's going to remain with television for the foreseeable future. Um, and, and then there's, at the other end of the spectrum, all that user-generated content. Um, but there's a huge gap in between there, and, and that's where we're looking to get content that's you know, maybe uh, not shown outside um, sort of its original markets, or maybe it's been shown a couple of times, um, but then you know, doesn't get repeated. Or maybe it's sort of special interest stuff that you know, a commissioning editor is not going to um, buy to go onto a, a linear network where you know, space is limited. Um, but when you put it in an on-demand environment and you've got a worldwide audience of 300 million people, um, a niche becomes something that appeals to hundreds of thousands of people, so it becomes worthwhile to show that content. And uh, so what Babelgum is doing is providing a, a platform for that content to get out to the, to the users. You know, people don't come to watch uh, a, a movie because it's made by a certain studio. They don't listen to an artist because you know, they're signed to a certain label. Um, they come to watch it because they're interested in the artist or they're interested in the actor or, or if it's a documentary they're interested in the subject and we're trying very hard to get content that appeals to, to specialist um, interests, to, to niche audiences, um, that sort of thing. So, so we're trying to arrange it by genre and not make it confusing. We, we like having this nice simple interface. I mean we probably will have brands, we will have more screens but you know, wherever possible um, we're trying to, to keep it limited. So this is the, the closest thing. This is the TV um, area, the sort of the browsing. Right. Um, you know, not sure what you want, but want to have a look around. Sort so of if experience. you click news now, so you can. If I click news, so I say I'm interested in news, and we've got news coming from people like AP, Reuters, um, ITN, um, those sorts of providers. So if I click news, I get a list, and so there's a very distracting thing going in the background there. But um, I get a list of what news clips are available, and that's a chronological list of all the stuff that's, that's there in an on-demand um, way. Okay. So if I decide I want to watch that clip, and this is one of the things I always like demonstrating because it shows just how quick um, the system is. So there, I've, I've hit news there, wow. and the news comes up very quickly. Um, that's not great quality, that particular clip, because I think it's come out of, um, out of Bangladesh, so it's probably been through several satellite feeds before it got to us. But, um, but still, it's not bad. Uh, no, but I mean, you know, if you, you, you know, there's, there's certainly a lot better um, in terms of quality, and okay. uh, you know, we can go and have a look at, at some of that. So um, this is streamed content? What you're doing is you're, you're firing... This is streamed content right. coming over the internet right now. Um, yeah. And you know, this, is, this is, again, how fast it starts. I mean, you just don't get that in a conventional streaming environment. Okay. 
possibly the first stages will be people watching short content until they're sort of used to the, the, the system and the platform, but then graduating to watch longer content, to watch documentaries, even to watch film, and, and we've got a mix of that content. Um, okay, so you showed, with, showed so. us the TV bit. Uh, there's another button right the, here. The second bit is where we start to get into the personalization. Um, so if I go back to the, um, the channels here, and um, yeah, let's say I go into my uh, the, the trailers and stuff here. So um, um, this is where, you know, say I'm interested in this film here, um, Miss Potter. Um, so I can, I can watch the clip, so you know, that's fine. I've watched the clip, I decide I, I want that clip or I want to share it with you know, somebody who, who might also be interested in it. So what I can do is go back to my section here and I can add it to my video. Um, and so now when I go down to the video section, um, that clip has been added into my, my channel. And so over here I can set up different channels. So this might be my, um, you know, this might be my film channel, um, of things that I'm, you know, films that I might like to go and see. And maybe a list that I want to share with friends. Yes, this is where you start to get into that personalization and social networking. I mean, they're, you know, they're very interlinked. So, so I could take this area of, um, of, of uh, film, and, and it's both active and passive. This is where uh, we, we, we can see, we can populate this sort of uh, channel with content that, that fits your interests. So you can either manually go and get stuff and say, I want to put this into my area, or you can ask the system to say, find me more clips about cycling or death metal or whatever your um, channel is. And then when you've got those lists, or you know, if you don't have those lists, you can start to go to this third area, which I can't show you at the moment because it's not in the, um, the current um, beta release, but will be in the, the release that's coming out um, soon. Um, that's the, the social network area. And that's where you can go along and, and you know, say you're interested in you know, a, a genre of music, you know, drum and bass or something like that. You've got some clips, you've got some news clips and animation, and you think they're, they're very interesting. You can go along and you can find a, a social network that's also interested in, in drum and bass or cycling or death metal or Cuban dance music or film or whatever it happens to be. Um, and you can go and find or you can set up a network and you can join a network. Um, and you can see the other people in that network, you can share the sorts of things that, that you have in your playlists, you can see their playlists, um, yeah, you can even see who's in that group, um, what have they recommended, what uh, the people within the group, you know, who's more highly rated in terms of is there, are their recommendations you know, agreed with by you or by other people. So, so there's that whole sort of social dimension and that's actually the way we think a lot of people will find content, you know, not necessarily through um, through sort of big branding and that, and that sort of thing, but but through social interests and. So how do you make money? Um, well, uh, basically by advertising. Um, it's going to be free to watch. People will come along and, and watch the video, and you know that's the TV model that's worked for 50 years. So you know, uh, I don't think that we need to, to reinvent that sort of model. Um, we think because of the quality and um, the way the system works that it will uh, be very attractive to advertisers and also that personalization element because we can start to target advertising to based on the, the profile of people and you know that's good for people too if you are interested in travel and documentary then you're probably more likely to want to see ads for resorts or British Airways or whatever it happens to be rather than ads for um, you know fashion magazines so are people worried about privacy issues well, we don't have that sort of background data. I mean, it's, it's based on it's based purely on, on login and name. So there's no way that we can connect, you know, my login as you know, Chris the Terrible with you know the person who lives at this address in, in this country. So so we don't think there are those sorts of issues. The uh, founder, two founders, um, one is Silvio Scalia, who set up, um, founded, and uh, is the major shareholder of a company in Italy called Fastweb. Fastweb were one of the pioneers of IPTV, um, one of the first companies to offer the, the triple play of phone, broadband, and, uh, and content that you could get delivered to your home via a, a set-top box. Um, the other person behind it um, is, the, uh, is the brains behind it is, is Eric Luma. He's uh, got a long history in sort of distributed computing and you know, Silicon Valley and you know, masters and PhD from Stanford University in, in this sort of area. So he's sort of the, the technical genius behind it all.